So today we have a very interesting guest, uh, a newcomer into our sport. Uh, can you tell us your name <laughs> and what you're doing here in Fly Fermo Italy? Well, my name is Felix Baumgartner. I'm here uh, very first time in my life and since four days we're trying to get up in the air and yesterday it happened. Did my very first paramotor flight, super exciting. It was a dream for a very long time and today in the morning I did my second and third one. And so far I'm doing good. Yeah, yeah very nice. The first, uh, I was also filming a little bit and I could hear you scream up there. The first pass was very nice. So for the people that don't know, what are you most famous for? Well, first of my, my good looking, most mostly. Yeah. Second, because I'm so humble. One of my biggest strengths. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's actually my skydive from space back in 2012. I yeah. went up in a, in a helium balloon in, in a pressurized capsule in a pressure suit. It took me about two and a half hours to reach um, jump altitude, which was 39,000 meters. And then I stepped outside my capsule, stepped off and within 50 seconds uh, accelerated to 1,355 kilometers an hour, which is more than supersonic speed. It's called Mach 1.25. And I was the first human in history who broke the speed of sound in free fall. That's probably what most of the people know about me. Uh, being such a badass in other aviation uh, disciplines and sports, what what brings you into paramotoring? Well, you know, I like all kinds of flying. It doesn't matter if I fly a helicopter or paragliding. As, as soon as I'm up in the air, I'm happy. Hmm. I, I was feeling like this since I was a little kid. I was always up in the air. As a kid, of course, you're limited. So I was climbing a lot of trees. Half of my, my childhood pictures, I have been on a tree. I always liked the bird view to see the world from above it was very attracting to me and of course i could not afford to take helicopter lessons when i was a kid so i had two dreams childhood dreams number one was becoming a skydiver the second childhood dream was becoming a helicopter pilot but my parents are not rich so i never had that money so i had to wait that's why when i was 16 i started um, skydiving in austria at the local skydiving club you know, over the years, I was trying to push the envelope and uh, I became a base jumper a couple of years later and then I was becoming a professional base jumper, made some money. And then in 2006, uh, I went to Los Angeles to do and doing my first um, helicopter license. And since that day, I'm, I'm a helicopter pilot as well. A couple of years later, I got the chance from Red Bull to become an aerobatic helicopter pilot. And now, I'm, because I'm retired, I'm still working on different ways how to get up in the air and again to see the world from above and paramotoring is a very cool concept because um, it's not very expensive you can pretty much start anywhere mm. yeah? you can't stay up in the air so that's a huge difference versus paragliding because you know you're always going down or sometimes you reach some terminals but then you're still going down here you decide when to when to go down and when not that's why I like the concept of paragliding or paramotoring because it's your it's your your wing, it's the paramotor. Uh, you put in some fuel and then you decide wherever you want to go, and yeah. it's it's a cool sport. And I love to be up in the air. It's like my second nature. You know. So I, I like that sport. And as far as I can tell, I only have a couple of flights at Thomas School. Very good teacher, very smart and very efficient. Yeah. yeah so I'm I'm very happy so far. That's Thomas from Totofly. It's Thomas from Totofly. Uh, one last question. Uh, you have about 15 to 20 flights already, actually. Yep. I've lost count because you came up and down, up and down. Like I said, Tom is very efficient. So as, as you are such a fresh pilot, or actually not yet a paramotor pilot, what would you like to tell to the people that are considering trying it now when it's still so fresh? Well, no, as, as, as far as I can tell, um, as a freshie, I think it's very important because in the beginning, and that, that applies to everything, when you start flying helicopters or base jumping, you don't know anything about the sport. So you, you pretty much put yourself in a situation where you do not have experience. That's why it, it's very important to work with the right guys, yeah. like Tom. Yeah? He's a very good teacher, very efficient teacher. I like his, his method, you know, and he also has the feeling can we do multiple um, flights a day or do you need a break? Yeah. Is it already good to go to the next level or do we have to repeat the previous level? So I think it's it's very important that you put yourself into the right hands. Yeah. Um, safety comes first. 
very, very important because you want to have fun, you know. If, if you break a leg or you hurt yourself very, very bad, it, it sets you back, you know. You have to go to the hospital, you probably take six, seven, eight months to recover. Now imagine how many how many flights you could do within seven months. Yeah. You know? so it's better to take it slow, yeah? better to repeat the task many, many times because, you know, you only get better by repeating the task and, and, and get more and more skills. Yeah. And Thomas is the guy who always tells me, hey, it's too early or you can move on to the next yeah. step and then you're going to have fun. Good, good. So we're going to uh, stop here, but do you start the engine on the ground or on your back? I always start the engine on the back because this is the safest place. It's away from yourself. You have to make sure you do not point the engine towards people. So you always look around and if it's safe, put the engine on the back, make sure your straps are closed and then start the engine. I wish there was more like-minded people. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very yes. much. Have fun. I will. So, you see, that's easy. And... Uh, <laughs> bon? did, did he say bone gardener? The, the tree gardener. Thank you. But now I don't see you anymore. Yeah, but I, I will sit like this so you can see me. You're gonna shout at her? Now you have to start it all over again. No, it's, it's not the Oscar.